In my last video, I announced that I had started working on my passion project again. It was a fresh start. You know what? It was a wonderful start. Writing the wrongs of the past, purging the bad ideas from before. It was glorious. I was riding high, and this time it wasn't just the coffee in my veins. <laughs> no, it was passion. It was bliss. <laughs> and then, as quickly as I came, I retreated back into the shadows to continue working on my project in solitude once again. That was over a year now. A lot of things have changed since then. I'm a different man now. I've regrown my beard. Am I wiser? Maybe. Optimistic about the development time of this game? No, it's still going to take me years, but I'm in no hurry. And the game has changed a lot as well, so I think it's time to catch everyone up on what I've been doing. My main goal since that video has been to recreate the demo, using the knowledge of the past to improve this version, getting it to a playable state and implementing more of the core features that it was lacking. I'm creating a sandbox RPG with a focus on immersion, world building, and exploration. So this includes things like character customization, dungeons, and side mechanics like cheese and weapon crafting. My favorite genre has always been role-playing games. I especially like when you have fine-grained control over your character, their appearance, abilities, and especially personality traits. It was left out of the old demo due to time constraints, so I'm excited to start implementing it properly in my game. There are a couple of things I needed to consider when adding character customization. First is the role-playing aspect of the game. Being able to play a character who is skilled in the art of cheesecraft, blacksmithing, enchanting, and various other side hustles. As I mentioned in the last video, this is the most important to me as a developer. The variety of characters you can build, the choices you can make as that character, and feeling like you're experiencing that character in their day-to-day -day life. The second thing I needed to consider was the combat, which is most important to everyone else. I needed to incorporate both of these playstyles in how you define your character. So I've added skill trees with unlockable perks, but the skill trees include both combat and non-combat perks. These can range from unlocking new sword skills and improving your effectiveness with weapons, magical abilities such as summoning creatures to fight alongside you, social abilities to try talking your way out of an embarrassing moment or to get a better deal at the market, to just peaceful hobbies that can help you in your goal to becoming a world-renowned cheesemonger. For now, combat abilities are broken up into one-handed, two-handed, archery, magic, and summoning. I've added some abilities such as Fury Strike, Smash and Grab, Blink! Blink, blink, blink. Oh god, what have I done? I might have gone a little overboard. Let me just dial that down a little bit, jeez. <clears throat> Did I really spend time creating that effect just to get a laugh in a devlog video? No, I actually do need this somewhere else in the game. Oh, you thought this was a cute game? <laughs> Anyhow, as you level up, you'll gain skill points that you can use towards these perks. And you can create a character that has no combat abilities at all. I've included other gameplay hooks that allow you to play the game without focusing on the combat. This is what I mean when I say I'm creating a sandbox RPG. Gameplay hooks for weird people like me who just want to immerse themselves in the game instead of playing through the story properly. There's a story there. It's a great story. The best story ever? Yes. But maybe you just want to f*** off for a bit and explore the game's side mechanics instead. That's cool too, and I will encourage it. But, if you're going to be roleplaying as a reclusive necromancer squatting in a dank cave, then you probably don't want to do so while wearing a bright shirt and overalls, so I've added custom armor and clothing as well. The type of armor you wear will have your typical pros and cons. Heavy armor provides a lot of protection while being cumbersome, making it hard to sneak around and increasing the cost of your spells. Battle mages are a fun class to play, but at the cost of lower magical efficiency. Cloth armor doesn't provide a lot of protection against damage, but it does offer benefit to magical users by increasing their magical potency. As of writing this, the armor slots are broken up as shown here. The amount of accessory slots are subject to change, but I like the idea of having a lot of options when it comes to accessories, letting you customize how your character plays by what accessories you equip. But also, I think the layout looks pretty good like this. It's hard to imagine this looking good any other way. It was at this point in the video that I wanted to talk about one of the main things that I've been working on, which is the first dungeon, the Mushroom Caves. This area is tricky for me because I'm not interested in making a dungeon crawler, but I do want to have dungeons because I think it will be fun for you guys to explore. But since I'm not interested in dungeon design myself, this is one of those areas of game development that's least fun for me to work on as the developer. However, lately I have been tinkering with procedural generation. While I'm not interested in procedural generation as a player, I've discovered that I love working on it as a programmer. I squeal like a schoolgirl every time I press a button and generate a whole dungeon. And updating the dungeons as I continue to get better at level design and pixel art is a lot easier. Just click a button and boom, new dungeon. And I actually have a little bit of experience with procedural generation now. Occasionally I like to take on little distraction projects whenever I need a breath of fresh air or I feel like I haven't learned anything in a while because this project is pretty easy to code. And during a few of these diversions, I found myself working on procedural generation and a little bit of 3D, but that's another story for another day. 
I tried creating a small roguelike and in the process I learned all sorts of new things like Dijkstra maps, placing prefabs and decorating levels, and creating interesting layouts. And this has really gotten me interested in expanding my experience with procedural generation and trying to make some beautiful natural looking levels out of it. It'll keep the development fresh for me, add replayability for y'all, and I will take any opportunity I can to swap out tedious level design work for my programming skills, which I am far more confident in. The overworld is still going to be manually designed, as well as other important explorable areas, because that's where I want most of the exploration to take place. What I like the most is the moments in between the dungeons when you're heading into a new town or exploring the world on your way to the dungeon. Let me know what y'all think in the comments, keeping in mind that I am fully prepared to spend a large chunk of development time making these the best damn procedurally generated dungeons that I can. And either way, I do intend to make at least some of the areas procedurally generated, like the Mystic Woods area of the game, which is my fey inspired lost in the woods kind of thing. And what better way to do that than with procedural generation? The name is a reference to my asset pack on itch.io, which you can get for just a few dollars. Make your own game using my cutest f assets. So what now? Well, this video was intended to be an update video to let everyone know that I am not dead and I am still working hard on the game. The next video should dive deeper into the mechanics I mentioned earlier, assuming I don't disappear again. As for me, I'm in the mood to start adding some new areas to the game. I've been building the vertical slice of the game so far, but I want to start expanding horizontally now, adding in new areas to explore, designing some new enemies and weapons, things that probably won't be in the demo, but I like the flow where the project takes me, you know? I'm more interested in the journey than the destination. But the demo is coming along nicely. I've started working on cutscenes for it and all that fun stuff. Finishing the caves and its boss are among the final main things that I need to do, along with some more cutscenes and animations. Be sure to follow the project on Kickstarter to get notified when it launches. There's a link in the description. It should not take me another year to make the next video. I have a lot more free time now than I did in the past year, but on the off chance it does. I'm mostly active on my Discord, where I post updates in my devlog channel. Sometimes in random channels, just to keep you on your toes. Thank you to the patrons that support my work. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.